Here you go. One more round of applause. Tiny, small, but it said health food store. Just think of that, a hundred years ago. And look at what Clark's has done here. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> it is beautiful, it is beautiful. And now, how many of you actually knew my father, Paul Bragg? Good, good, that's one back there too. So I want you to know, my father had such wise advice. Wise advice. He took a sickly, puny, little boy. Just think of this. He was so weak, he had to have a back brace to sit up. He'd been out of school a year, couldn't even go to school. The teacher sent the school books home so his mother could go over and the teacher would come once a week. One day, the neighbor lady came over next to their little farm, said, You've got to take your son. We'll take you to this lecture. This health man, Paul Bragg, is having a lecture in Oakland. We want to take you and your son tomorrow night. The son said, oh, I won't go. I don't want to hear any health lecture. No doctors help me. No one can help me. He had boils, pimples backaches, blinding headaches. Well, my dear, the neighbor lady showed up the next afternoon, just before the lecture was to start. She said, here we are. We're going to get you and Jack. Guess what? Off to the lecture. I won't go. I won't go, Jack Elaine said. Yeah. I won't go. She said, this little boy is so sick, he has to be here. And my father heard all the commotion up on the stage. He said, I have some chairs in my dressing room. Bring them out and put them on the stage. Oh, Jack heard that. Stage. Oh, listen, he, he, he was so nervous. He, two men appeared in, in suits, took their arms, and walked him down the aisle to the front and up the steps on the stage. Jack Lane, for the first time in his life, was in front of 3,000 people. And, and all of a sudden, my father pounded on the table. He said, down with garbage, white sugar, white flour. The whiter the flower, your sooner you're dead. Oh, oh, my mother, all of a sudden, my mother's giving me white sugar and white bread. She's killing me. Oh, no. He forgot the audience, and from that moment on, he listened to my father, Paul Bragg. I want to be like this man. Oh, he's going to save my life. Oh, he listened to him. Gee, my father did some cartwheels. He was a gymnast too, you know. And he walked up down the stage on his hands. He Jack looked at that. He said, my golly, he's amazing. And then he talked about he lifted weights. Jack had never lived weights. Oh, I want to be like him. And Dad saw that he was getting the interest of this young man. Oh, my golly. <laughs> you have a master heart. Every second of your life, it's working for you. Do you know that? I want each one of you in this audience to be your own health captain from now on. Jack said, that's what I need to be, my own health captain. Oh, I'm going to get well, he said. I'm going to be able to go to school even. I want to be like this Paul Bragg. He forgot the audience, they weren't even there. 
And then my father said, bring out the garbage can. He thought, what's he doing with the garbage can? He put the garbage can in front of the table on the stage here. And then all of a sudden the table was set for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All of a sudden some young ladies came out with trays and put breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He said, yes, Lily and Joe Goose will now have the average American death dinner and death lunch and death breakfast. And then they wonder why they have a high blood pressure aches and pains, arthritis, blinding headaches, pimples and boils. See, Jack had all of that. Oh, my. He looked on the table. Ooh, ooh I see a lot of the food my mother feeds me. Ooh, yes. So, he put one dish after another in the garbage can. <gasps> he said, oh, yes, you all like that bacon. Oh, boy, with nitrates and nitrates. Oh, they're killers for sure. Have more now. Have more. Joe and Lily Goose, they love it. Oh, they love those sausages. Oh, <gasps> yes, nitrates and nitrates again. Killers, killers. More, more. One after another. Oh, yes. White flower pancakes, woo hoo! The life is bleached out of it. No B complex for your nerves. All it does is cause constipation. Acts like glue in the colon. And I want you to know, Jack Elaine, he never forgot it. Never forgot it. Oh yes, Coca Colas, woo hoo, woo hoo! He drank Coca Colas. Oh, yes, he had candy, too. Oh, yes. All right, listen to this. I'm just sharing with you so you know how that puny, sickly little boy went to 97 and a half. He was on television something like, I think, was it 36 years, six, di six days a week. And guess what? Never sick, never tired, never stopped. And I just saw his dear wife, and she's approaching 90, Elaine Lalane. And I just visited with John Lalane, J O N, John Lalane, their young son. I say young, he's 50, in front of the grate in the visiting area. And he saw this little old wrinkled old lady. Oh, Dick, Dick. Oh, I'm here because God sent me here. You're going to change the life of millions, millions. Oh, he said, I want to do that. He says, oh, you, that, God sent him to give you this book. She showed the book to him. Oh, fasting. He said, I love to eat. She said, oh, no, just... This is for purification, mentally and physically and spiritually. And you're going to change the life of millions. Jailer, jailer, I want to go back. Boy, they, they right there. And she shoved the book closer to him. And so he grabbed it. He got back in his room. And he threw it on the floor of his cell. He said, if I'd have spit in here, I would have spit on it. That's what I thought of fasting. So it stayed there all the rest of the day. He woke up the next morning. And listen to this. Every meal, they had to put three trays down for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because he said, if you don't, you're starving me. He just ate, ate, ate. So... He got, he just could reach from his cot and reach for that book on the floor, grabbed it, started reading it. Oh, oh. 
He was glued to his hand for three hours. He said, I cried. I realized I've been killing myself. By the way, I've been drinking two fifths of whiskey a day, doing drugs every kind, smoking two to three packs of cigarettes, swearing, not believing in the beautiful creator. Breakfast was on the floor, three trays. Then they brought lunch, three more trays. And he went, and he, jailer, jailer, what is it, Gregory? He said, I want a Bible. <gasps> a Bible? Please get me a Bible. That's the nicest thing you've said to us since you've been in this jail. We'll get it for you. From that day on, Dick Gregory started fasting. He became health captain of his own body. And the Miracle of Fasting book is number one health book in, guess where, Russia. Even before when the, when the Iron Curtain was up, it was number one. Is anybody here Russian? Okay. Well, do you remember the book? Well, I want you to know that guess what? The Russian girls, they went all the Honolulu marathons and they... From little girls on, they followed the brag teachings. Oh, yes. Fasting. I fast every Monday. Eight glass of water, three of them with vinegar, brag vinegar in it. Oh, my golly. Boy, I feel like I'm 18. Never more in a bra. And I look what I do. My father taught me that when I started developing bust, and boy, does it work. I, I go to a woman doctor. She said, Patricia, you're the only woman that I know over 50 that they haven't gone down, unless they've had a boob job. But, and next is what you do. 640 muscles. You either use them or lose them. Oh, my golly, people say their hands are getting stiff. Their body's getting stiff. Not me. By golly, I'm on the go all the time. I wake up with a smile and go to bed with a smile. And I say my prayers upon awakening before I go to bed. Mary Hudson and Keith Hudson were my ministers in Santa Barbara. And their daughter, Katie, I called her God Songbird. I paid for her singing lessons from the age of eight on. At 12, I bought her a guitar. And at 13, I thought, hmm, it's time now. Katie blossomed out and just not sing at her parents' church. I heard on the 4th of July, LA Coliseum, the football game, they needed someone to sing God Bless America, the national anthem, halftime, out on the football field. And I thought, Ooh, how am I going to get her there to sing? I heard they were looking to they were going to pay someone. And I, I called them up the man. I said, listen, I have someone really great. Well, that sing for you, good and loud and great. And I'll pay you $500 to so let her sing. Oh, you're going to pay me? And he said, well, are you sure she's good and loud? I said, good and loud, and she's 13. 13? Are you sure? <laughs> I said, I know she's good and loud, because I've been listening to her since she's eight years old. He said, well, send me the check right away, <laughs> and, and I, I will arrange it. So Mary Hudson, Katie's mother, took her down. And was she a hit? Oh, my golly. Oh, the, 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 the stadium was just electrified. And they clapped and howled. And Katie got the joy of singing before the masses. And guess where she is this weekend? Singing with the Rolling Stones in Las Vegas. How many remember Ellie Mae of the Beverly Hillbillies?
Well, my dear, my dear. Well, anyway, you know, there we were. We were right near NBC and Universal Studios and Warner Brothers and all of them. And the Hollywood stars would come to us. And Ellie Mae came to us, Donna Douglas. She, she said, you know, they see, before they came to us, they'd have to write for two weeks everything they they ate, drank, popped, drugs, whatever they did. We wanted to know it all. And it was secretive. We never tell. We never tell. So for two weeks, they breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all the good bedtime habits, sleeping good, not good. All right. So Donna came, and there she was, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Meat, 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 meat. She was, she said, she was about 100 pounds overweight. She says, so we went over everything. And Dad had a red pen. And he would, with a red pen, he'd go right through the things he did, you're not supposed to have. Woohoo! Wow! There wasn't, she, she was three bad girls. Woo! 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 And guess what? Afterwards, Dad says, now we're giving you a program that we want you to have. We will allow you to have meat three times a week, not three times a day. See, she was one of those southern girls. She liked her ham, her bacon, her sausage, and all those things in the morning, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She said, I'm a southern girl. She says, I got to have my meat three times a day. She says, I, no. And Dad says, well, listen, Donna, if you can't follow it, it was nice talking to you. Here's the program. We've had a lot of success all over the world with a lot of the Hollywood stars. And so we would love to inspire you, too. You're, and um, so she called about three months later. Oh, you tell those brags. No, we finally... Finally, I, I got the I got the message. I started really reading the books, and she said, "Now she said I don't even think I care for meat anymore." And she said, "Guess what? I'm now learning after reading that book, Miracle of Fasting. I've learned to fast." Well, Donna Douglas got an 18-inch waist, and she called us up about nine months later and asked if she would come out. Well, I have news for you. We hardly recognized her. Woo! My golly, she looked years younger. She looked fabulous. And so she calls about a week after her visit. And she said to my father, she said, do you think it would be too wrong? They, they're looking for a southern gal to play a part of called Ellie May in the Beverly Hill Village. An 18-year-old. She said, you know, I'm 38 now, and I have an 18-year-old son. Dad said, don't tell him your age. Forget it. We don't believe in age. I feel 18, by the way. And you know what I do? When I wear pink, I even feel younger. I love pink. I love pink. Well, so Ellie May took my father's advice. She went down and tried up for the park, called us back three days later. Will you tell Paul and Patricia Bragg that Ellie May is on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> and we used to go down and watch as they were making it. It was great. Oh, but we have people all walks of life. I've been nutritionist to Clint Eastwood. Do any of you here know Clint? No? Well, he's... He, guess what? I've been his nutritionist 55 years. 55 years. And so, and guess what? He just made a statement. He said, I'm going to keep making movies till I'm 105. Years young. See? See? Priscilla said, fasting is the physician within. In other words, it's your doctor. You see what it's doing? It's going all over your body, cleansing, because you're not busy stuffing the food in your mouth because it takes time to assimilate it, eliminate it, put it to use. 
You are a miracle, each one of you. They're cardiovascular. Oh, people tell me, oh, my hands are cold. I said, feel your ears, all of you, right now. Feel your ears. I hope, are they nice and warm? Good. Because if they're cold, no. See, see, that's not good. Do you need circulation? So I, so when you watch the television tonight, get up and do a few exercises, okay? And I go barefooted. Dr. Scholl said that I had the healthiest beauty you've ever seen. I've never had a bunion, a corn, a blister, an acre of pain. And I barefooted most of the time, really. At my office, yes, yes. See, and it's wonderful. Walt Disney's secretary called my father and said, oh, Paul wants to see you. Paul wants to see you. Yes, well, I didn't think he was seeing anybody right now. He said, well, he only has a few days left of life. He's at St. Joseph's Hospital. And could you go soon? Yeah, it says, just tell me when. He said, well, you could, if you could be over there in an hour. Dad said, I'll be there. And Dad went in, and Walt Disney was in almost a fetal position, curled up like this with a tube in his nose, oxygen. Took him about 20 minutes to say a few words to my father. He said, dear Paul, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I, dear friend, you tried to get me to stop smoking for years. I'm sorry I didn't. If I have my life to live over again, I promise you, I'll never smoke. And see, that's what killed Walt Disney's cigarettes. Neil Brenner. How many remember Lana Turner? She was beautiful. Beautiful to the end. She was a crack boy, but she could not stop smoking. She died. I hope no one here smokes. Woo! Stop it. Don't be around it. No smoking. Here's my three pound baby. 600 pages. My father was the original triathlete, swim, bike, run. Paul Bragg won many biking, swimming, and running contests. What do you think of that? And so I wrote this book, The Complete Triathlon. Endurance Training Manual. And young Dave Scott won five Ironman triathlons in Hawaii, 112 grueling miles. And he, see, I used to put it in a hardcover, but then I put it out in paperback. He said, Patricia, please change the name. It's the Bragg Bible of Health and Fitness. He said, what it's done for me is amazing. Bruce, come up, please. Bruce. Bruce Clark. Yes. Isn't this wonderful? Oh, Bruce. Bruce, what a wonderful job your family has done here. Oh, I, I'm so thankful to Stuart. Oh, yeah, yeah. We would have been. Well, it's just wonderful what his family has done. His, his dad and his family. How many generations now? Four generations? Five. Five generations. Woo! <laughs> 1972, isn't that wonderful what you've done here? Well, my God, this store is, I think it's the biggest health food store I've ever been in. Absolutely. And then, of course, the best part is I've been using your product since I was like 10 years old. Oh, so my that's what golly. <laughs> isn't that wonderful? Though? Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. You're well, amazing. Thank well, you so I, I tell you what, I, you know, I want you to know that uh, in the old days, I used to give seminars, all day long seminars. I'd say good night to everybody at 6 o'clock, and guess what? They didn't want to go home. I said, well, if you brought your sleep, sleeping bag, maybe, maybe we could, I could put you all to sleep.